Clean welfare bill affects Cambodian immigrants, AIDS risk for women on the rise, and the sixes went big at the spectrum. Hi, my name is Saborn Ung. Now let's go to our roving restaurant critics, Penny and Sinat. Hello, my name is Vandy Fong. And my name is Sinat Fong. We're reporting here from CFF News. We're about to go in Sands of Our Blues. We're going to check out how the service and the food are. Well, we'll meet you in there. Yeah. The interior is dark and secluded. We sat at a very comfortable booth. Hi, welcome to Sands of Our Blues. Hello. How are you both doing today? Would you like something to drink before you start? We'll have a pan of spring water. Okay, um, we have a few specials for brunch today. Sumptuous is the word. Wow, look at this place. It goes on for miles. What I'm gonna get? Chilled ribs and lobster salad? Is this rib? Here's another word. Succulent. It looks as good as it tastes. And every bite goes down better with some cool jazz. This is a tough job, but somebody's gotta do it. Like other clubs. Santa Barbara Blues is the place. Alright, we're back from Santa Barbara Blues, yeah. and I'm full. How about you, Vanny? Yeah, I'm full too. The music, the service, the food, it was great. We'd like to come back here one more time. Now, back to you in the studio. The food looks great. And now with our lead story, Sari Kim. Good evening, my name is Sari Kim, reporting to you from CFF News. Our topic this afternoon is Cambodian immigrants. There are about 30,000 Cambodian immigrants living in the city of Philadelphia. They escaped from Cambodia to Thailand and came to the United States and other places around the world. They were psychologically and physically victimized by the Khmer Rouge that killed more than one million people. They never forgot that nightmare. A new life in America gave the Cambodian people a better place to live, but they faced difficulties. Many children who grew up here were so focused on being Americans, that they abandoned the old ways of their parents. Some have worked hard to raise their families, but many of them are under public assistance. On August 22nd, Bill Clinton signed the Welfare Reform Bill into law. This will affect many legal immigrants, especially the old and sick. Unless they became American citizens, they would no longer be eligible for food stamp or a supplemental security income. In order to be citizen, they must know English and historic facts about the United States. The new welfare bill says that immigrants who do not receive lim limited benefits from the federal government after five years 
will no longer receive any help. The in individual states also could benefit drastically. This is the situation of every component immigrant in America. Back to you, Linus Vaughn. Thank you, Sarah, for that report. Reporting direct from the Frontiers of Medicine Special Medical Correspondent, Sanat Porn. Good evening. My name is Sanat Porn. Reporting live from the CFF Houston News Center. My topic is smoking equals death. Did you know that 28% of 6th through 8th graders smoked cigarettes in 1994 and that 44% of ninth through 12th graders smoked cigarettes that same year? Maybe they didn't know about the physical effects of smoking. The Surgeon General states that smoking causes lung cancer, throat and lip cancer, emphysema, and heart disease. During an interview with an ex-smoker, it was discovered that one of the main reasons she started smoking was peer pressure. So for you kids out there, remember some nap not smoking tips. Number one, if you smoke, you will die. Number two, instead be healthy and smart. And number three, no more excuses. Back to you, Linda Sworn. Thanks, Anat, for your healthy tips about smoking. And now with our fashion report, Linda and Sukane. Hey, Linda, now we're down at Center City. Let's make some shopping. Yeah, I'm dying to get that Tommy here jacket. Then let's go. Come on. We started our search on Center City, the fashionable wellness street area near Rittenhouse Square. Price were higher than expected, so we went to a lot of different stores looking for a bargain. Window shopping is the best way to avoid spending money. But it's hard to resist trying on new outfits. There are other problems too. Look at the size. The right pair of shoes is important for total outfit. Shoes are also a quick way to add a couple of inches. After our tour was over, we admitted it, it's hard to find perfection, but sometimes you get lucky. I just like the pants. This one I like. Yeah, I oh well, I can't find that today. Let's go home. We went home empty handed, but we survived to shop another day. Now our anchor person, Savorn Ung's report on rising AIDS for women. Thank you, Linda. There are many infections that are transmitted through sexual contract that can cause serious health problems. Many sexually transmitted diseases, SCDs, hardly shows any sign or symptoms. It is important to know how to prevent SCDs and seek treatment if you may have been infected, at least once a year or whenever you have a new partner. In the United States alone, 18,285 persons have already died by AIDS. Another 31,834 have contracted the disease, and most of these will die within the next two years. An estimated 1 million have the virus and could develop the disease at any time. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention say that AIDS is rising among women. Last year, for the first time in this country, more women contracted AIDS through heterosexual sex than through intravenous drug use. Moreover, the disease rate is now climbing nearly four times faster among women than among men. Back to you, Linda. And now our featured movie critic, Sakang Yim, reviews the bear. film about bear and two men, told from the point of view of bear. The bear are being hunted by the men. The large grizzly is shot and separated from his small friend, Yoke. Yoke is captured by the hunter, but eventually set free and finds his grizzly friend. 
I give this film one thumb up and one thumb down. I like the action scene, especially the 120 Grizzly and the Mountain Lion. I also like the many colorful outdoor shots. The actors were boring and the scene were slow. There were hardly any talking, but I would still recommend this film for anyone who likes Barry. A sporting correspondent visit the Sixers and come away with a special gift. Thanks, Linda. My fellow sportcaster Vanny Prime and Chan Yim and I got to a new core state form earlier to take in a little crowd action and watch the Sixers warm up. Basketball wasn't the only thing going on in the forum. Ex heavyweight champion Riddick Bowe was there. He left early because he's training for a fight on December 16th. The original four tops entertained the crowd. The late blimp dropped in for a visit, and of course, the Sixers girls. This is an important game for them. The Knicks are considered to be the best team in the Eastern Conference. Yet the last time the two teams played, the Sixers beat them handily, and number one draft pick Allen Iverson scored 35 points. Can the Sixers repeat? The correspondents were going to find out. After the game, he went courtside. He pumped a few hands, then went to the locker room to congratulate the team. Oops. No cameras allowed in the locker room. But we did come up with something new for the ages. Stack House and Iverson, Philadelphia's new backcourt. You have only just shut your eyes to imagine them in the Basketball Hall of Fame. It's going to be a great season for the Sixers, and we don't think Vanny will be watching the hat soon. Good night from the CFF Migrant Ed Sports News Team. Way to go, Sixers. And now a report from our science desk with Nguyen Ung at the Franklin Institute. This is Nguyen Ung, your roving science correspondent. Last weekend, I visited the Franklin Institute China exhibit. This wasn't just a collection of old artifacts. This exhibit has real artisans from China who've been touring the globe, showing off some of the cultural and technological gifts that China has given the world through the ages. The first thing I came across was the art of paper making. The earliest paper was made in China from tree bark, rags, and fishnets. After 100 BC, the Chinese made most of their paper from bamboo. The process is still being used in China today. With inner painting, the painting is done on the inside of the small bottom. The brush is a slender bamboo stick with a tip shape like a fine pointed hook. The artist dips the hook in ink and uses it to paint on the inside of the glass. Dough painting is uniquely Chinese. A few pieces of colored dough becomes a small figurine to brighten up holidays and a celebration. These statues should not be confused with table rolls. At the far end of the exhibit, I came across an army of 7,500 life-size terracotta figures, horse weapons, and chariots discovered near the tomb of Shi Huang Quin, China's first emperor. The army was intended to accompany the emperor and fight his battles in the next world. Nothing was heard from them since, but they still look ready for a fight. At first glance, I thought this might be the first airplane, but it's a two-person draw loom. The weaver at the bottom throws the shuttle. The weaver at the top sets the weaving patterns by pulling different strings attached to 5,000 different silk threads. They use sound and body cues to keep their back and forth movements in perfect time. This is what they make. Pretty cool. And this is what they make it from. No, it's not a pot of soup and dumplings. This is silk in its raw form. A tiny silkworm wraps itself in a cocoon that resembles a small quail's egg. The thousands of layers of individual strands are unwound from the cocoon and spun into the threads that use on the loom we just saw. The Chinese have been raising silkworms for at least 5,000 years. China is once more stretching out to impact our lives. I've shown just a few high points of a much larger exhibition. If you want to see the rest, hurry to the Franklin Institute. It's worth a trip. This is Nguyen Ung, your roving science correspondent. Now back to the studio. Very interesting. Thank you, Nguyen. Well, that's it for tonight. For Savon and for the rest of the news team, I'm Linda O. Good night.